HGG Radio. Reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. HGG Radio. Gospel Radio. What a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God. Join us for the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast, where we discuss matters close to the heart of this and every Saturday at 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. I am your host, Dr. Lincoln Bryan, alongside your co-host, Pastor Clive Atkinson, Bishop Hopeton Morris, and Elder Edmund Muir. The Iron Man Empowerment Podcast. We're not just talk, we're informative. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast right here on HGG Radio. Good morning to all our listeners that are tuning in and joining in from near and far. We say special good morning to everyone that has been listening to us from day one. This is our 12th episode here on the Ironman Empowerment Podcast. And we truly want to thank you for joining us and thank you for keeping our company. For those who have been listening to us from we are in the Ironman Empowerment Show, we want to say special, special good morning to you. And thank you, of course, for joining us um, to on this podcast, where, of course, we discuss matters that are close to the heart. This morning, we're live inside your home, inside the car, inside the studio. And I'm delighted that you choose to join us this morning because we have another great episode lined up for you this morning. I'm your host, Dr. Lincoln Bryan, along with our co-host, Pastor Clive Atkinson, Bishop Hopeton Morris, and Elder Edmund Muir. Remember that you can listen to HGG Radio live via YouTube, Facebook, hggradio.ca or by downloading our Higher Ground Gospel Radio app via your Play Store or App Store. You can join the conversation on our social media platform or by messaging us on your voice or sending us a voice note on WhatsApp at 825-343-7778. Again, you can join the conversation on our social media platform or by sending us a voice note or a message on YouTube on 825-343-7778. Remember that if you not have already subscribed to our channel, so if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do so today. All right? Please remember to share the link uh, with your friends and your family. That's HGG Radio. Go there and share, like, subscribe. All right. Good morning to everyone. Good morning to you, gentlemen. And how are you this morning to my very uh, great co-host? Good morning, gentlemen. Morning. How are we doing today? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Very well. Very uh-huh. well. Um, Awesome. Come on in. Amen. Amen. And we want to say a special, special good morning to those who are celebrating their birthday this morning. And also if you're celebrating a, a your so who are celebrating their birthday, happy birthday. And if you're celebrating your wedding anniversary, we say good. Mo- we said happy, happy anniversary to you. And we pray God's richest blessing on your life continually. Uh, if you're celebrating this morning, uh, my cousin is celebrating her birthday today. An ardent listener of this program. She's here every week joining in and listening in as she go by the handle Marsha Ben and over there in Florida. I say happy birthday to you, my darling cousin. And thank you 
you for making HTG Radio your, your number one radio of choice on a Saturday morning and this podcast. Good morning to all our listeners near and far. I see my friends from Jamaica, from um, US, from Canada. Last week, I got a text, um, Reverend Clive, my friends from our listeners from UK, and they said, Doc, you forget to shout out your UK massive. UK is listening. <laughs> so I said to my friends in the UK, good morning to you. Um, to all my friends in the UK, uh, good morning. And in Europe, I want to make sure that we capture all our listeners everywhere. I don't want to leave out anybody this morning. Good morning to you, Mayor James, over there in New York. Good to have you. Morning, Mahalia, Shireen Carter. Good morning to you. Good morning, Simone Edwards. These are our early listeners. Uh, Nicole Attel over there in Boston. We say good morning to you uh, as well. Thank you for tuning in and joining in. Lady Ange, I see you. Good morning to you, uh, Ange. Angie, good morning. Good morning to everyone that are joining us. So all our early listeners that are tuning in and are coming in. Antigua is in the place. Lady Smith, greetings to you. Our listeners are, are of stretch near and far co-host. So again, we thank everyone for joining in. So how are we doing? Uh, co-host, how are we doing today, Bishop? How is it going over there in Montreal? How is everything going? Um, we can take a time to our co-host to shout out our listeners and stuff before we get into the program. Oh, bless the Lord. It's, it's beautifully white outside right now and it's coming down. Uh, but it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the day that the Lord has made. And yeah. uh, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, yeah, so it's snowing outside at the moment um, and a little bit cold, but God is good. God is good. We're doing very well over here and uh, uh, just want to greet all the listeners today. Um, I think to, to make sure you don't forget anybody, just basically just say to everyone listening everywhere and anywhere everywhere. You are from. <laughs> right, but so, you know, but... Rev, they like when you shout out your city at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And where, where they're joining in from. <laughs> So uh, I just so, so God trying. bless you, everyone. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for making us number one at uh, this time on a Saturday morning. God bless Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And Bishop, let me say welcome to spring, sir. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, don't look like spring. it, but it's actually spring. <laughs> it is spring. Is, is it snowing where you are? Um Oh yes, oh yes. I have to I have to get the blower out after the show. My driveway is uh it's uh loaded. So I have wow. work to do. So we, we are getting it down here as well. Um I thought it was over because spring is here and in winter we didn't yeah. get snow in winter, but it's happening in spring. So we don't know yeah. what's happening, but but we're giving God thanks. Well, well um, you know, we <laughs> Well, I, we don't feel so bad at Lemur. <laughs> you, you, usually we are the ones that always have the snow um, linger around for, until this time, right? But the weather was so good, like, uh, even up to last week and week before last. Like, yes. we, man, we were outside in plus, I think one day it went up to what, plus 14 or 15. And I'm yes, like, wow, this is, there was no snow. It was grass everywhere. Then I wake up one morning and I and then boom. <laughs> yes, I was. I, I took the girls out riding, and they were at the park already um, last week, just enjoying themselves. No jacket, nothing. And then before we know it, we start get windy, and then hey, uh, we. I didn't even know it was going to snow. Everybody, I saw persons was messaging and saying, "Oh, prepare for the weather." This, that, that. I had plans to go and support my friend last night who was preaching, and um, I'm getting ready. And before you know it, my driver is just filling up. Is a slow. I'm like, "All right, I think I just have to um, stay home." Talking about preaching, if you are in Toronto area, I'm um, tonight. I'm preaching at Faith um, Faith Apostolic Church. That's 44 Rivalda Road, where Pastor Taylor is the pastor. It's their youth conference. I'm speaking tonight. So if you're in Toronto, you can join me at Faith Apostolic um, Youth Conference. So someone said it's raining heavily um, there in New Jersey. Shireen, we will take the rain over the snow, believe me, because I wouldn't have to clean up anything after the show. I wouldn't have to do so. I'll take the rain. But good morning to you, Shireen, over there in Jersey. Said it's raining. So this morning we have another great one, and we want to jump into um, the podcast um, this morning, and we want to talk about uh, sanctification. So let me set it up. 
Okay, let me set it up this morning. Sanctification is the continuing work of God in the life of the believer, making him or her holy. Sanctification is a progressive work of God, and men and man make us more and more free from sin and like Christ in our actual lives. In its basic meaning, to be holy is to be separated and set apart to God. And saints are those who are separated or set apart. It is helpful to realize that sanctification, as with many true to relate it to our Christian life, has both an objective and a subjective aspect. Sanctification is the process of becoming. How does it occur? What discipline, habits, and ways of thinking do of where thinking and living do Christian need to cultivate to become sanctified? So what discipline? habits, ways of thinking, and living do Christian need to cultivate to become sanctified. Elder Muir, I'll begin with you for a round table. We'll start with you. We'll go around the table, and we will talk about it. Sanctification, Elder Muir. Uh, good morning to you one more time, and thank you, Dr. Brian. Thank you to all the listeners who are online with us. God bless you, uh, Bishop. Good to have you again, and Pastor, my Pastor Clive. Sanctification. The act of making holy or being holy. There are so many different aspects of sanctification that we can look at. We can look at the formal sense. We can look at what it meant in the Old Testament, what it meant in the New Testament. In some cases, you might not see the word sanctification, but we might have words like holy and, and, and so on and so forth. And so as we look at this word, we realize that it was an important aspect of the Christian believer. In fact, it was important for, for God to have his people sanctified yeah. even in the wilderness before he put in his appearance. Therefore, as believers in Christ, um, the Bible teaches that uh, our yeah. God is holy and, and without holiness, no man can see God. Without sanctification, no man can see God. It therefore means that sanctification to the Christian believer is of utmost importance and we should endeavor to be sanctified through the spirit of God. Moral uh, attitude is not sanctification. Moral behavior is not sanctification. Sanctification can only truly come from God. So if we're outside of God, we can never be sanctified. God bless you. Mm. Bless you. Bishop, we'll come to you, sir. Um, thank you um, very much. Yes, so um, as you said, sanctification is where you are set apart and not only to set apart, but set apart normally to do a work for God because anybody that God going to use, he normally sets you apart. You got to be different in order for him to use you. Um um, um, Samson comes to mind when you talk about sanctification. I mean, from the womb, uh, um, his parents were told exactly what they should do and what they should not do, right? Um, the problem with Samson is that he could not control his flesh. And when you can't control your flesh, God can't trust you, mm. right? Because if you can't control you, you cannot be trusted. And I'm sure you will never um, trust somebody who have who have no self control because you don't know exactly what they um, they're about. And so that's the reason why the scripture said, um, you know, when he died, he only begin to deliver the children of Israel. Right? He was one of the judges that never fully um, walked into his calling because of his flesh. So it's very important that if you are going to to, to work for God and God going to use you, you must learn how to control yourself. I think I'm, I'm somewhere in First Thessalonians chapter 4. It talks about we are we are supposed to know how to possess our, our body in sanctification, right? And so, um, um, you know, the, if, if you don't know how to do it, the scriptures, there's quite a few scriptures that tell you, and as the program go on, I'm sure you will hear more about those scriptures that tell you how to possess your body in sanctification, set apart for God's purpose, for God to use you. God bless. Powerful Bishop. And, and then we're going to really dive into, into those. Thank you for that, um, that thought there. Pastor Clive, we'll come to you. Sanctification. What comes to mind? Let's, let's, let's do this round table. Sanctification. 
<clears throat> I, I couldn't say it better than uh, Bishop, but uh, set apart. Um, I want to, you know, like <clears throat> was thinking about it under the Old Testament, as Bishop would say, that um, persons were were sanctified from in the womb. Um, I want to let you know that from the time Jesus died, you and I, um, when we get saved, the Bible, let me, let's use Bible, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 10, it said, tells us that as followers of Christ, we have been sanctified. As followers of, followers of Christ, we have been sanctified through the, the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. So one, one, once, one per, once a person come to Christ because of what Jesus did, so now we need to maintain our sanctification in him. It's as if um, it was uh, uh, what happened to, you know, let's use Samson like he was from in the womb was sanctified. You and I, before we were born, Jesus Christ make the make it the, 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 make this sanctification possible so that you walk right into it and live into it. So now it's now for you and I to to maintain what he has done for us in Christ Jesus by through you know fasting and praying and keeping ourselves um um unspotted from the world and uh, make sure that you know our spirit and our hearts and our soul is maintain and have that sanctification or be sanctified before the Lord. Sanctified before the Lord. Go yes, on. sorry, Bishop, is there a difference between, thank you for that, um, Pastor Clive, is there a difference between sanctification and consecration? That's for me. Offense. Yes, that's for Bishop. Yes. Okay. Um, is there a difference between sanctification and um, consecration? consecration? Right. Um, the, the the process of you being sanctified is to go through what is called consecration. Right. Um, consecration then is is where you you basically prepare yourself. Um, remove stuff from yourself, you know, it's, it's like taking a bath to cleanse yourself. And uh, you do that normally through fasting, through prayer. The Bible talk about we are washed with the word of the Lord. Um, then that is where you take the word of the Lord and you um, obey God's word, right? And by doing that, um, you live in the word, you, 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 you basically... Um, consecrate yourself no when you're consecrated no god can use you so no you are sanctified um you, you, you know by the lord um if, if if you notice um that the people of god during um israel days and you see that a lot in the book of leviticus so, um the, the lord speak um quite a a few times concerning the people coming to him and to make sure that they wash themselves, take a shower, wash the clothes that they're going to wear, um, 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 you, you, you know, to come to him and, and, and so on. And then when they and, and remove all the jewelry and all these kind of uh -huh, stuff uh -huh. before they come to him. Right. Um, um, and, and, and that is consecration. God said, you cannot come to me with the, if, if you are not consecrated and so when they do that now and come to him then he can you, you, you know um use them for whatever purpose he wanted to to use them for so it's very important brethren brethren um you know if we sin you know if i do something let's say against you know my wife not happy with you know i can always buy her flowers and all this kind of stuff and do something nice, cook her a special meal, you know, go on some of you guys' website, ladies' website that you have, uh, rosary and all these kind of website and buy her a nice dress and she'll <laughs> love it and, uh, and uh, hug me and say, okay, and she forget about everything that I've done. But then we've done something against God. We can't give God more money. We can't read the Bible more, right? We can't go to church more. You have to repent. 
right? Yes. Um, in other words, you got to consecrate yourself um, if you do something against God. Uh, that, that's against the word of God that if you sin. So therefore, um, if you do, you know, um, um, you got to consecrate yourself before God. You got to repent, right? So that God can use you. Thank you, Bishop. So therefore, then sanctification, then Bishop, has a moral component to it where where one is set aside or set apart and so then it is a requirement you'd say that we stay in that stead in order to remain um sanctified so i'm getting from you and what i'm hearing is that consecration is the preparation stage to sanctification yes so being consecrated consecrating yourselves in order to be sanctified and sanctified is that continuous move then and walking with the lord is that what i'm hearing um for consecration or sanctified it is there then so a lot of time then bishop we you know we hear folks said you know i am i, I, I am anointed i'm anointed by god is there then how does anointing then plays a role in sanctification or does one has to go through that process um, then to be anointed? How, how anointed tie into sanctification? I'll come back to the bishop on it. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, you know, the apostolic church love to use the word anointed. I'm, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. Even those who are not anointed say they're anointed, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know... Um, <laughs> Um, but, but we must remember some of the ungodly kings of the world were also anointed, right? Mm. The, the, right, right. The Lord, right. The Lord called them his servants, right? Um, you, you know, to do his special purpose because the word anointed basically is the, the uh, is the call of, is the call of God um, uh, or the unction of God or the ability that God gives a man or a woman to do something special for him that they of themselves cannot do, right? And so we see the various, various king. God calls Cyrus the ungodly king his servant, right? And 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 and, and God use him, right? To to um you know in in the life of Daniel, God use him um also to to get the children of Israel to go back home, right? And so God called them his servant. So. Uh, you know, but 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 to be <clears throat> to, to to be anointed by God in in our age and in in our time, um, you know, in the Christian world, um, it is very important that we are consecrated mm -hmm. and that we are sanctified um, by Him. The Bible talks about come out from among them and be ye separate. Very One of the things that when you are when you are anointed by God, is that you 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 are, you have the ability to do right anything that the Lord um, anoints you to do. It nothing can stop that from happening, right? So it's so so it's very important that we you know sanctify ourselves, consecrate ourselves, and when we live in that. Um, we, 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 we live in, 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 in that place of sanctification, Bridget. You have God ears all the time, right? When you live in sanctification, right? You, you, you God is, is like young God become body. God will always talk to you. If God can't talk to nobody else, God will talk to you. Bridget, that's the reason why when God said, I don't know if I'm talking too much. But yes, no, go ahead, sir. Go ahead. We're in. We're right? all the way in. That's the reason why when man was created, right, in the image and in the likeness of God, right? What used to happen when God take man, when we are consecrated, God must be able to take you and God take you and put you where he wants to put you and put you in a garden, right? Call man called Adam. And then God brings stuff to him. That's a consecrated life. And said, so you name it. There are some things when you are consecrated, God will not do for himself, right? God will ask you to do it as a consecrated person and that thing will become law and then the bible said that god will come down 
every day in the cool of the day and talk to a man that is living in a consecrated life. So, brethren, you have communion with God when you are consecrated. You will not hide yourself from God. God will not hide himself from you. You have the ears of God at all times. You have the presence of God. You have the might of God. You have the anointing of God. You have the glory of God. You have the favor of God. Anytime you are consecrated, brethren, you are at a special place. The Bible talks about he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. God, when you are consecrated, you are in that secret place. God can share secret with you. Things that he wouldn't tell anybody else, God will tell you. Right? So it's very important, brethren, that, that we make sure that, boy, um, 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 we walk in that place of consecration because when we walk in that place of consecration we walk in a level of anointed that the enemy is afraid of you hallelujah be to god and just by your presence things begin to break without you opening up your mouth you 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 walk into a church and everything's not going fine and just by your presence without you taking the mic without you saying hallelujah without your prayer everything does come into in, in into in, in, in into formality you know everything just fall into place because you shows up that's a man who who, who is consecrated and who is anointed by god god bless you my god we can wrap the show right here listeners you ought to be chiming in and saying amen amen if amen, this amen, just amen, bless amen, you amen. you ought to say something uh, what i hear bishop is saying is that when you are consecrated you have the ear of god divine favor rest on you you can imagine where god said anything you claim i will just agree with it in heaven when i hear that bishop what it joins me what what it where it connect me and what i'm hearing is that the lord is it is just saying i will agree with you whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven whatever you loose on earth loose in them i will just agree with what you say because when a man is living a consecrated life no devil in hell can stop a consecrated man or a consecrated woman you will tear down walls and the devil know the devil know those who are consecrated and sanctified and the devil know those who are playing games so 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 when you are consecrated my god you leap over wall and run to troop Amen. a consecrated man is an anointed man a man with power a woman with power my god bishop this bless me this bless me so much this is so powerful pastor clive come on in come on in oh my god you're good. Man. oh <laughs> i was listening to bishop and i'm like okay he's just gonna go let's keep going bishop it was, <laughs> it was good amen um you know when, when we are called by god um and we, we 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 say yes to god we must we we as believers need to know that the life that we live Paul says, the life that I now live in the flesh, um, I, I live it to the glory of God. I'm not doing, I'm not my own anymore. I am bought with a price. Mm -hmm. I, am, I, I am sold out, you know, and, and we need to understand that it's not about us and what we feel and what, you know, it's about me. No, no, no. It's what, you know, the Bible said that when a man weighs pleases, God is very handy me with be a peace. So my responsibility is 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 staying in, in prayer and in fasting and in separation. Jesus says something to 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 the while he was praying. Um, he says he said, "Father, sanctify them in thy truth." My God Almighty, he, he he's praying and he's to keep asking the Father, "Sanctify them in thy truth." In other words, I want you to keep them sanctified i want you to keep them holy because you see because god is holy mm -hmm. and if you and i want to receive things from god it you know you, you have to present yourself holy and set apart fit for the master's use so that god can use us you can't just show up um um dr brian and god just do things for you if you have never set apart set yourself apart doing things for the king not, not not to show that you know you are you're holier than thou and you know some persons you know you i'm anointed that no 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 
it's not for you to say, but it is for you to just do what you do. As the Bible says, you know that you must enter into your closet and pray. When you pray in secret, whatever God does, openly people will see you, see the anointing, knowing that you have been with the Lord. You have spent time with the Lord. You, you, you know, you have, you have, you have, you have, Take the, the 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 time out and to you know not just to have um, TV hours alone and I'm not saying TV time is not good it's good because you need that break but there is a call up on one's life for sanctification for dedication for being disciplined and a and a and a sanctified life is a disciplined life are you hearing me? For, to, for you to be sanctified and to be, it's a disciplined life. You have to Amen. discipline yourself. Amen. It, it was yesterday I was saying to myself, you know, I, I, Bishop, I was restructuring because I'm, you know, home and I'm sick and, and, and all this is going on. Um, just came out of surgery and, um, you know, but I was there, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, God, I want to restructure how I, you know, oh, I flow and the, the amount of time I spend with the Lord and, you know, it's always about God. It's about what I'm doing and to making sure and to involve my children. I have children that does live with me and I have to still kind of maintain. So my sanctification, let me say this. Your sanctification or your prayer life is not all, only about you. You have to think about the people and who God placed in your hands, mm -hmm. your family. You see, church, if you if you if you're and the church, if you're going up to 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 going up, you and the lad going up, everybody's coming up with us. So your call, the call of duty, will come when you're sanctifying yourself and saying, "Guess what? I need to bring my mother, I need to bring my father, I need to bring persons with me in in this place of sanctification." And now God is talking to you and you're hearing the voice of God. And it brings back my mind now to, 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 to Noah, when Noah was a just man. I believe Noah, you know, make himself sanctified and God could talk to him. And he says, God, because of who he is, he said, no, you're your family. Mm. When you are set apart, your family will be set, your family. And they will now start to learn from you how to be sanctified. And that word sanctified means to be set apart, to the call out, to be different. Yes. Uh, um, 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 and then the, all the anointing and stuff that comes has nothing to do with you. Mm -mm. The, the, has nothing to do with you. You spend the time in the prayer closet, let God does what let God do what God does. Yeah, he will you know, anoint you. He will, he will do will the anoint. anointing. Yes. He will anoint, yes. the Bible said, he will anoint your head with oil. Mm -hmm. Your cup will run over. Sure, listen, it's not, it's not them will anoint you. I know that you'll go to church and you'll get a little bit of oil on your head and the pastor will, no, 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 no. But he will anoint you when you stay in the presence of God, when you stay in, the, in, in, that, in, that, in that cocoon with God and Stay there until the time come for you to come out. And when you come out, trust me, God will allow you to. He says your, your gift will make room for you. Yes, this is powerful. Um, Elder Muir, I'm, I'm bringing you in on this one. Uh, sanctification being set apart and we talk about it. Come on in, Elder Muir. Come on in. You're muted, sir. Sorry about that. I want to go in a passage that Bishop mentioned earlier, and that's 1 Corinthians chapter 4. I want to read a little bit as I go, as we travel um, along this pathway. Um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus Christ, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and 
honor. And as I look at this verse, it clearly states that God wants every believer to live a sanctified life. And as Pastor Clive said earlier, uh, it takes discipline. And here we see Paul saying here in Thessalonians, saying to them that, hey, this is the will of God concerning you. God wants you to live a consecrated, a sanctified life to him. In order to live that sanctified life, there are requirements that we must do as individuals. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we need to resist temptation, resist the things that we are enticed by, which is not of God, and allow God to sanctify us. So before we are sanctified, we have to have a made up mind. We have to purpose within ourselves not to do some things because that will break the purity of what God wants to do with our lives. And I am still uh, bubbling with what Bishop said earlier, because when you're sanctified, you enter the room and indeed things change. Oh, glory to God. You know, events change. Things turn because now the devil realizes that, hey, there's a man here. I better keep quiet right now. I better shut down because there is a man of God in the house that is ready to tear my kingdom down. And so we have to look at sanctification in a manner that, that, that will allow us to know that without this, without being sanctified, we cannot usher the presence of God or we cannot walk in the authority that God wants us to walk in. Sanctification allows us to walk in authority. And that is very important for the believers to understand. But what we see happening now, and this is a sore point, is that we see church and we see things happening in church and we see a lot of performances taking place. As we see these performances taking place, uh, some things we recognize we recognize that we're not seeing the power of god because many times it's head knowledge and the intellect of man that is being used and not god because we're not sanctified we're not at the place that god can truly use us so you'll find that men do things in order to entice men and as a result god does not get the glory because he doesn't uh he's not um put at the forefront, and as Pastor Clive said earlier, yes, we have to remain in fasting and in prayer. And it's not about a public show or anything, any such thing. It is about us going to God, going to our prayer closet, going to him and say, Lord Jesus, here I am. When you put it in, then God will reveal himself in public. And therefore, that anointing that we often speak about will be reflected in our lives because now it is not us acting no more, but it is God acting because we have now cleansed the vessel, the tabernacle, the, the meat suit, as some persons would have said. We have now allowed it to be cleansed by resisting the devil that God can have a free course. In other words, we give God access to us, full access, when we live as sanctified a cut loose life from sin. Because yes, this is the will of God because God wants to dwell in us and God cannot dwell where sin is or he doesn't dwell where sin is. Amen. God bless. Sorry, thank you so much, um, Pastor. Thank you for that, Ella Muir. Um, Really powerful. So I am hearing then that we must have a vessel of honor, clean, pure, sanctified um, unto the Lord so that the Lord can use us for his purpose, his glory, his divine will, his purpose can be done in our life. So I see consecration then, consecration being the quality decision that one person have to make, that quality decision that you have to make to keep yourself separated and dedicated and holy unto the Lord. Sanctification then when we look at it is the act of separation unto God. And so we're, what I'm hearing um, from our, even our calls is that we, we, we must consecrate ourselves. And when we, we consecrate ourselves daily, just like we consecrate ourselves daily so that we can become sanctified. So my question then, 
And when we look at sanctification, um, and, and let me read this, the Bible said in Romans, Romans 12, 1 to 3, and the Bible said, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, reasonable service, your due diligence is a reasonable service that you present your body holy. So when we talk about sanctification, we're talking about the holiness um, that we should walk in because we don't talk holy anymore, um, Bishop, because holy isn't popular. I'm sure um, if we are talking about um, how we can make a million dollars within two, um, we will have thousands of people coming uh, on this morning. But when we talk about sanctification, a lot of people don't want to hear sanctification. Give us a topic that is hot, Dr. Brian, so we can join in. But when we talk about sanctification and being holy, sanctification seems like to be an, an old aged um, conversation, something of the past, uh, because we don't want to hear holiness anymore. And when we talk about sanctification and consecration, we mean unto God to walk walk upright, to walk circumspect, to live a life that is set apart and called out. And that is your reasonable service. It's a daily walk. How then can one say that I am anointed, but I am not sanctified? Can you be anointed and not being consecrated? Can you be anointed and not walking in the ordinance of God? Or is it after a while, we just know how to dip and when to shout and when to pause and let the crowd go, go, go wild? Bishop, can I be anointed and yet not sanctified. Amen. Thank, <laughs> Thank you for, 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 for that question. Amen. Um, what, what can happen is that you were anointed by God, right? And because of your lifestyle, you that anointed left you. Um, it's like Samson. Samson said, boy, I'm going to shake like other times. And the Bible said he would not that the Lord as what well, departed from him. And so sometimes that's why I said sometimes people believe that they are anointed and they say they are anointed and they talk like they are anointed. And the people, because they used to be anointed, think, mm -hmm. make, they think that they are still anointed, right? Um, and, and, and so on. But 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 the Lord has departed also. The Lord still can use you. I think um Bishop um um, uh, Johnson said sometime a week ago or a couple weeks ago that the Lord can use you and while you are fired, right? So the Lord can fire you and still keep you <laughs> and still keep you on the payroll, so to speak. Right? That's right. And, 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 and you don't know. And so it, it, it's very important for you to know where you are with God because your gift doesn't mean that you're anointed and that you are that, that God is still using you. Because once God gives you a gift, you, you still will use it. The Bible said the gift and calling of God are without repentance. You That's want scripture. Right. The Bible said right. that um, um, on that day, some will come before him and said, I preach in your name. I heal in your name. I even cast out demon in your name. And the Lord said, depart from me. I never know you. The word know there is not mean knowledge. The word know there is experience, mm -hmm. right? So the Lord said, I have no experience with you. Me and your old spirit never really connect. You didn't live the life that make it me to have experience with you. And so he said, depart from me. I don't know you. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, um, when you look in the Old Testament, everybody that God called for a special purpose and he anointed for a special purpose, he makes sure that he makes sure that they are sanctified. You talk about Noah, right? Noah, right. Noah have to live a life completely completely opposite like Reggie. you know how hard that was for him to do everybody sleeping with everybody everybody partying everybody doing their own thing and just him and his family i can just imagine the 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 the, the hard work that Noah have to put in just to keep his, his son safe, his house safe. Noah have to talk to them, watch them like a child because they were young people at that time, right? And they are friends, right? And uh, I'm, 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 but, but, but Noah have to make sure that he, he keep it together, right? Enoch, the Bible said, walk with God. 
Abraham, the Lord said, if I'm going to use you, you got to come out, <laughs> leave your, your, your family, leave the idol worship, leave everybody and come to a land that, yes. that I, God, will show we'll you. Show you. Right? Mm -hmm. you, you, you got to leave everything. Some people, they want to be sanctified, but they don't want to leave nothing, right? Mm -hmm. they, want to, they don't want to leave the man. They don't want to leave the woman. They don't want to leave the lifestyle. They don't want to leave the party. They don't want to leave the swearing and the cussing. They don't want to leave the cigarette smoke in the gun just smoking no if you are going to be sanctified brethren there are some God, things and that you have to make sure that you leave god tell moses brethren hallelujah be the god Help yourself, god, Bishop. God, to take him out of egypt amen yes. god said, i want to use you now but i can't use you while you are here in egypt right now mm -hmm. right, right. you're fighting right you're, you're cursing hatred deliver up inside of you so god have to take him out put him on the back side of a desert we're going to take care of animal and sanctify him right and then oh bring god. him back in order for him to be used by him the children of israel god have to make sure he tell them brethren god god tell them when you go into the land of into the land you know make sure that you do not do anything that you see the nations that are doing that sanctification brethren yes. that's cleansing yourself that's making yourself old. Daniel said, man, I'm not going to contaminate my, my own body. Amen. No, not eating, eating your food. The food that is put out Talk from, to from us, your table. Right? The three Hebrew boys, the same thing. That's a way of bowing to your dancing. We're dancing, you're dancing. Some of, your, some of those music that you're listening to, you cannot be sanctifying and dancing. Hallelujah. Ooh. To some of those music that you're listening God. to. Right? And, and that you're hearing. No, that's not sanctification. Amen. And praise God, hallelujah. Paul himself, when God called him, God take him apart. Paul went into three days, in, in, into um in, in, into some days. I'm not three days, but God he went into some three years of fasting mm -hmm. and prayer to sanctify himself so that God can use him. The disciples said that look, man, we are we are, we, we are going to give ourselves to fasting and prayer, right, amen, right. and preaching the word of the Lord. Even Jesus said, Amen, in, in, in um, John 17, for this cause I sanctify myself. Oh, yes. For their yes, cause sir. I sanctify myself. And so, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, we cannot escape. If you want God to use you, God wants you to be sanctified. No, no, no. Um, um, you, you, brethren, you, it's very important, brethren, that because um, every people, sometimes we say that, boy, you know what? God have to make us, um, uh, you just have to be available, right, for God to use you. But not yes. everybody is available, is usable by God, right? So you can be available and not usable, right? You must be usable right My amen God. bless the lord hallelujah be the god yes, so sir, i yes, pray yes, for you yes, the only way you can be usable right My is God. if you are sanctified, sanctified. by God. 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 God bless you sir in Jesus. Woo! Now, now somebody have to chime. This is a this is a tweetable moment. Not because you are available mean that you are usable. Go ahead, Pastor Clive. We got it. We got a chime. We got it. Put that on your status. Put it on your Facebook. Put it on your Twitter. Not because you are available mean that you are usable. Because you must be sanctified for God to use you. Pastor Clive, come on in. I'm excited. Come wow, on in, wow, Pastor wow, Clive. Wow. You know, when when I just got saved back in, the, you know, I've been saved now for over 30 years. And, um, you know, when we just got saved, when you have some of these old ladies in church that just walk in, man, I'm telling you, man, and, and, and they they spend time in prayer with God. They, 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 they You know, when you walk into service and you hear them start ball out uh, and you hear them start to say, uh, and, you know, say something is wrong and... and and and, and 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 when it's time that man you're pulling out that you're not leaving going home the same way you came in up because you're gonna get pulled out and then you're gonna get pulled to the halter. You understand what I'm saying? We're talking about we need to see persons, we need to see this type of old time you know, religion that that we have seen the manifestation of the book in the lives of these older folks. And now we're at a place where persons are just living. Without, um, you know, as you said, Dr. Brian, that, you know, it's like an old folk something. No, 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 no. What it was good for Paul and Silas is good enough for me and you this morning. 
Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to what the Bible says. Listen to what the Bible says. The, the, the Bible says, the Bible says, um, in, 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 in Timothy, 2 Timothy, he said, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord yes. knoweth them that are his. The mark that of God. Know who you are. Yes, that the mark that of God. God. My little God, the, the, the having the mark. Jesse, <laughs> just give me a minute. Give that a minute. Give that a minute. Give me plenty of minute. Having this in the Lord, know them that are his. God know when you're sanctified. Yes. God know when you're fall apart. No, look here. We're here talking about this, you know. My daughter don't care if I'm in the middle of whatever. You have to get to a place where you just crawl up in the hand in the in the arms of Jesus. Yes. Because the Lord knows his own. Come mm -hmm. on, somebody. That's right. And Son, you don't need to knock on a door to go into God. When you're son, listen, you have a key, you have a master key. You push, you go in and says, God, here am I. Glory to God. So listen to what the Bible says. There's a seal. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. That's yes. sanctification. That is. That's sanctification. Amen. The Bible goes on and it says, but if, but in a great house, they are not only vessel of gold or of silver, but also of wood. My God Almighty, that there, so in this same house, you know, you're going to have persons who are not sanctified. Yes. Are you hearing me, somebody? That are not sanctified. Hallelujah. And, and of earth. And so to honor, some to honor and some to dishonor. So in the church, you're going to have persons who are sanctified, set apart. But you're going to have some person who just want to go to church and be a church goer. That's why the Bible said that he's going to take out the church from within the church. I can't Amen. hear you this morning. Amen. No, the part that I want to get to, the Bible says, if a man therefore purge himself, that is suggesting that it is important for you to purge yourself. If a man, therefore, it is you have to have that desire to purge yourself. You have to have that desire to want more of God. In the mm -hmm. middle of a service last week, God said to me, you got to pray now. Um, Elder Muir, you're here. And I, was, I, I, I wasn't supposed to be in the service, um, Bishop, because I'm... Um, recovering from surgery and the lord does give me enough strength to say go on a church and while i was in the service i hear the lord said to me I, got, I want you to pray for this specific reason because there is going to be a problem and if you don't pray if we don't pray as a body even though you know such and such and such and immediately i begin to pray within my spirit and i call the church into three-day prayer and fasting now the Bible said that nothing good will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Yes. That the person who, I'm not saying that I'm more sanctified or holy than anybody else, but for me, for me, I know I have a responsibility to sanctify myself, to yes. set apart myself. So listen to what it says. If a man therefore purge himself from, from these, for uh, he shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified, meant for the master's use. Are you hearing me, somebody? My God Almighty, God want to use us. And I want to let you know this morning that what he did for us on Calvary, he made it possible for us to be living a, a God-sanctified life. And it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with me. All it is is you put in the work by spending quality time with God so that you can hear the voice of God. One more thing before before I before I hand over. You know, then some time ago I was preaching and the Lord just give me this word. If we're not hearing the voice of God, be concerned. If we're not hearing the voice of God, be concerned. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said to me that if you're not hearing my voice now in the earth, 
How are you going to hear the rapture? The trump of God. How are you going to hear when I call my loved ones home? How are you going to hear when you, when, when, whether we live or we, where we die? Amen? We, we have got to get sensitized to the voice of God so that when the trump of God sounds, when, when the Lord should call us home this morning. Amen? All right, that's where I'll leave it right here because this is your Amen. Morning. <laughs> come on in, come on in, Elman, Elamir. So consecration then, I'm going to come to you, Elamir. Consecration, help us to stay consistent in being doers of the word. It help us in our intimacy with God. It keep us from yielding to the flesh. These are some of the things where consecration help us to do. And hence the end, and from also Satan, from the enemy, because there's a war going on in our members. And so the Bible talk about the renewing of our mind, the new renewal, the change, the transformation that happened in our mind that will manifest in our way of doing, our way of being. And so Satan, uh, and so when he does it, it prevents you from Satan devices and succumbing to the plans of Satan. It is called then um, for being hard on oneself and having a mind to suffer in the flesh. So for us to be consecrated, we have to suffer in the flesh because the flesh must die for one to remain consecrated. Come on in, Elder Muir, and talk to us on it. Amen. Yes, indeed. You say the flesh must die. This is what Jesus said in John 17. Verse 17, he said, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. That's Jesus right. was praying for his disciples. He was praying before he went and sanctify them by truth. And many times Christians don't read the word of God. They're talking. They don't read the word of God. So when we don't read the word of God, how then can we be sanctified? We don't read, we don't pray, but we do everything else. We become so busy that we forget the simple foundational aspect of our Christian life to read the word of God so that word can marinate on the inside, hallelujah, and bring it forth a change because sanctification is change. So we have to allow the word to marinate, man. Come on. We have to regurgitate this word over and over that it will change us who we are, that we, we become humble in Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I, I want to say to someone this morning, if you want to be popular, Christianity is not for you. <laughs> boy, boy. Hallelujah. Boy, glory boy, to boy. God. If you <laughs> want to be popular, you're going to be a follower of the world and do the things of the world. But if you're set apart, it means, therefore, as we spoke about earlier, we spoke about Daniel, we spoke about the, the, the three Hebrew boys. When everyone else was doing something contrary, they were doing what God would have had them to do because they were set apart. They would not eat the king's meat. Glory to God. You mentioned earlier, Dr. Brian, that some dance you don't dance. Oh, hallelujah. They won't go certain places when you're sanctified. And watch this now. Watch this. Watch this, people of God. Remember this now. In the Old Testament, they washed themselves to be sanctified. But when we check out the New Testament now, we realize that one thing, one fundamental thing that I need us to remember, we're sanctified by the blood of Jesus. The moment Christ gave up his life, I believe Pastor Clive alluded to it earlier. When Christ gave up his life, sanctification came out of eternity, ushered in fully. Once and for all, we're sanctified. Oh, glory be to God. And if you're sanctified, you got to maintain that state of sanctification by the word of God, by the truth, which is in the word of God. Let, yes. <laughs> hallelujah. So, so we have to live by. Let us people of God, let us people of God seek, hallelujah, to, to walk according to the word of God. Too many things are creeping in, keeping us away from the word of God. In 1 Thessalonians 4, again, it says, keep, oh, we must learn to possess our bodies. Keep mm -hmm. your bodies. Keep it away from some things. Hallelujah. Don't let greed, anger, lust, don't let these things come up on the inside because when they do it keeps us away from god oh glory to god hallelujah we must be yes. available and not only available thank you bishop thank you thank you but usable oh hallelujah yes. glory to god usable because what we decide in our minds that we are going to walk the walk and talk the talk 
Oh, glory yes. to God. We're not going to be followers of man, but followers of God. Hallelujah. As the man of God said, follow me as I follow Christ. So it is Christ's word that will guide us. Oh, glory to God. His truth will sanctify us and keep us that we will be available fit for you. Master's use. Wow, 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 wow. There's Christian. one that, was, that I was thinking about. Um, um, you know, growing up, you hear the, 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 you know, the scripture of oh, the scripture just beating over here in our ears, and it says, um, 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 work out your whole salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your whole salvation with fear and trembling. The other verse over, right, says it's not you that is working, All but right. it's God in you doing the work. So when you're sanctifying yourself, God, you know, it's as if, God now take all of your faults, all of your bad ways, all of the things that you can't do, you can't manage to uh, to overcome certain things and do it for you. That's what God does, you know. Yes. He knows that you're weak in some areas. He knows where you're strong in some areas. And don't try to be strong in areas that you're weak. If I know that I have flesh problem. I'm not going to go and call a sister on a Friday night because I have a flesh problem. Any night at all, sir. Any night at all. <laughs> any night. <laughs> any, any night. Any night. I'm to come over, help you clean. <laughs> any night at all. I tell people, I say, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, this years and years ago, I set up myself in such a way. I said, I have swelling skin problems, so I'm not coming. <laughs> 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 so you have to set up your so listen, yeah. you have to remember it is God now inside of you working out the thing for you. Even though you are there working out your own salvation, you know. But remember, you as a human is gonna fail. So you have to remember that it is God. So how God is gonna work if you don't pray, if you don't fast, if you don't seek God. If you don't put present your body now as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your oh, reasonable yes. service. Yes. So going to church is not, oh, you know, uh, it's a sacrifice. No, it's not a sacrifice. It is a reasonable service. You praying when the church called for prayer is not a sacrifice. Oh, let's have, I'm going to do a No, this is a reasonable service. What is a sacrifice? A sacrifice is something that is, uh, that, uh, that is asked of someone and you're giving it or doing it um, until it hurts. My God Almighty, are you hearing me? But when you're doing reasonable service, serving God is a reasonable service. Going to church, reasonable service. Worshiping God, reasonable service. So don't mix reasonable service with sacrifice. Amen? Right. So now Amen. you don't get into a place where you're saying to God that God, for you I live, for you I die. For you, I, I will do anything. And we sing the song, Bishop. And when we sing the song, by the time we finish, we forget what we just sing. Lifting holy hands to you. And God is saying to me, to me, daily, you're doing something different. But when you are sanctified and you allow God to be working all things in your life, believe you me that you will be set apart. You will be that man. You'll be that city that's set on a hill. You'll be the light of the world. You'll be that person that walk into your workplace. And when you walk in there, persons know who you are and say, mm -hmm. uh, nothing can happen because Johnny is here. My God Almighty, Bishop is here. He said, oh, yeah. When you walk in your workplace, the unsaved must know that you're there. And they know that you're anointed. People say, I can't curse. Hey, you, you, you can't curse. You don't see the man of God. And you, at your at your church, they don't call you elder, they don't call you minister, they don't call you. But at work, they acknowledge you. You don't see the man of God. You don't see the because the they, they, they reverence the God inside of you. They know that you're walking with God. And when they see you, it, when, anything happen at work, no man call such and such. Call Muir, he will pray. Call um, Lincoln, he will pray. Call. They know you, the world know you, but do we really know who we are? Yes. 
Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor Clive. We talk about consecration and separation. If you're just joining us on HEG Radio, the time is 11.02 at Mountain Standard Time and 11.02 in Eastern Standard Time. We're talking about consecration. And of course, we have joined live with our co-hosts, Bishop Hopton Maris, Elder Muir, and Pastor Clive. We're talking about consecration, being set apart, being called for service. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, and thy power of great div grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and be closer and be closer. Join to the bishop. When we are consecrate, consecrated, do we are saying that the Lord will pull us closer. It pull us into divine relationship with God. Talk to me about the divine relationship that we have with God through consecration. Amen. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> When we are consecrated by God, right? As I said earlier, you have God ears, right? And God have your mouth, right? So you become a spokesman for God or a spokeswoman for God, right? Um, um, God is able to share things with you. You come into um, a communion um really you know it's like a friend relationship you have with god if you notice in the scripture all of those great men of god everywhere they go right they never build a house first they build an altar first mm. okay right and and you can you can do a bible study you can read upon the altars of abraham and the altar of isaac and the altar of jacob every new place they go they build an altar because if they are going to stay sanctified, they are to stay on their knees. Okay? They are to make sure that they are hearing from God all the time. Okay? Right? So, so they make sure that they have an altar. Right? We, we, because right. an altar create revival right um, um a, 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 an altar a altar is a place where where, where where things happen an altar is a place where where um you, you don't man hear from god god hear from man it, it, it's like you, you you are there all the time um in the presence of god at all times so in order when you are sanctified man you and god is is of a good thing as the songwriter said going on right so it's important that you make sure that you remain there right remain in prayer because it's at that place that god can correct you is that place that god can talk to you is that place where god can minister to you Bridget, um, um, um you know um my mind is going back right now to to Cornelius, Bridget. the man the bible said he was a man of prayer even though he wasn't saved and that's how powerful consecration and, 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 and prayer is, right? They, 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 they are brothers, twin brothers, so to speak, right? And, and, and this unsaved man, right, will allow God to send a word, go all the way in Joppa, find Peter, right? Um, um, somebody take too long to cook the food that they were cooking. He was hungry, went to relax, right, <laughs> on the house top and cause God to send a word to him and say, go, man, I'm sending you to, to, to so-and-so, right? And, and, and God have to talk to him and minister to him. The prior, brethren, that's how powerful prior is and consecration. When you are consecrated by God, God will allow your prior to take the wings of the morning and go find destiny helper and Ooh. come to minister to you, right? That's how powerful your prior is. Remember, right. brethren, your prior cannot die. The, 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 when you are consecrated by God, holy, holy, it will holy. cause God to send the, the angels of heaven and yes. come and fight against the prince of the power of the ear where you are to release what God have for you. My right? God and, and, and so people, when you keep that virgin, when you are consecrated by God, man, your, your, yeah. prayers, your prayers carry weight. Your, your prayers are power your prayers are anointed your prayers are glorified your prayers cannot be stopped 
right? When you are consecrated, because there is brethren. The Bible said that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Yes. So therefore, yeah, when you're when you're consecrated, your priors cannot be accused. No, the devil can say, God, you can't hear this prayer. This man just curse. This man just swear. This man um, um, um live a certain lifestyle. No, your prayer cannot be accused, right? And so your prayers become pure prayers, and there mm. is no demon in hell. There is no prince of the power of Florida, of, 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 of Jamaica, of Canada, amen, of whatsoever community you are that can withhold that prayer. That prayer of free access. My God, God, my God, right? my that God. prayer of free access to go before God. Amen. Praise God. And demand what you are asking God for. That's when you are consecrated. When you are consecrated, brothers and sisters, you have a prayer life. Amen. Hallelujah. You are like you, you are like Elijah that, that said, Lord, I'm, I'm, my prayer is, is that you would just show them yes. <laughs> that thou art God. It, it was not a long prayer. Just show them. And oh, you want, oh, I want you to show them, Lord, just answer by fire. And that's, just, hey. that's it. Fire, come. Mighty that's God. A consecrated life, bridging. Hallelujah. Be the God. Your prayers carry weight right so the more you pray and uh, and you're consecrated is the more powerful your prayer is god bless you in jesus name. wow your prayers cannot be accused by the enemy your prayer has free access to go to god please stay with us we're going to take a break and we will be right back Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 a revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio. Join me, your host, Rashane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. Do you want a revolution? I say, do you want a revolution? Thank you so much for for staying with us. If you're just joining us, we are uh, talking about sanctification here on the Ironman Empowerment Podcast. We are, uh, of course, talking with our co-host, Bishop Hopeton Mars, Pastor Clive, and Elder Edmund Muir. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying with us. Bishop, we're talking about uh, your prior having divine access um, to the Lord. We're talking about sanctification one other thing that i want to read bishop and peter talked to us in first peter 3 verse 9 and peter talked to us about ways to remain sanctified and he said never return evil for evil or insult for insult scolding tongue lashing berating but on the contrary oh, blessings right. praying for their welfare praying for their happiness praying for their protection and truly pitying and loving them for know that to this you have been called Indeed. that you may oh. yourself inherit a blessing from God that you may obtain a blessing as heirs bringing welfare and happiness and protection for let him who want to enjoy life and see good days 
good whether a parent or not. Keep his tongue free from evil and his lips from guile and treachery deceit. Let him turn away from wickedness and shun it and let him do right. Let him search for peace, harmony, undisturbedness and from fear, agitating passion and moral conflict and seek it eagerly. Do not merely desire a peaceful relationship with God, but with your fellow men and with yourself and pursue after it. And so the same appeal to our faith here then is saying consistently in living by faith to please God must be a function of the decision we make by faith. Faith please God in our heart and is also a function of consecration. Elder Muir, I, I want to bring you in on this topic because Daniel, I want to bring you in on this line right here, because Daniel and his friends are a key example of the Old Testament of how their dedication to God led their decision to be separated unto him. They uh, left the outcomes in God's hands as they stayed in faith, believing God to come through for them and he did. So Mark I'm God. saying, when you are living a consecrated life, and Bishop touched on Daniel a little earlier, when you live a consecrated life, there is a level of faith that you have in God because you know that you're being honest and true to him. Talk to me about that trust in God when we know we are living that life that is pleasing unto the king. Ella Muir, I'm coming to you on this. Talk to me. Elamir? Keep leaving my mic uh, muted. Oh, bless the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's essential that we, we trust God. And I was looking in Romans chapter 8 where it was talking about the law and uh, grace. And uh, I want to read something here um, in answering the question. Um, for the verse 5. Um, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that spirit the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, in answering your question now, uh, a person in general is usually not as confident when they're not living the life for God. They may put on a facade, a show, but they are usually not as confident in bringing out the things of God. Let me establish this fact that we all well know that God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is why when one is not sanctified, one walks in the flesh mm -hmm. and the flesh itself can never please God because God is spirit. Now when sanctification kicks in, then God kicks in. Now a man is no longer relying on self where he become timid or doubtful. But when the spirit of God is truly there, through that sanctified living, that man now will become a force, hallelujah, for the devil to reckon with. That man will now become, be, become so powerful because the spirit now is activated in the life of the man. So it is important for the spirit of God to take full control in every situation. Let me patch up a little thing that we spoke about in the past, because when, when I was thinking about Saul as well, we mentioned, uh, uh, can a person be anointed or, or, or and, 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 um, what not live? I don't remember the exact point that yeah, we and made. not being sanctified. Can you and be not anointed and not sanctified? Yes. Yeah. We saw that, that Saul, he was, he was anointed to be king. He was an anointed, he was anointed to be king. But what happened after that? We realized that he was not sanctified, and therefore he had to have David coming in to play that harp for the, the, the evil spirit to leave. Oh, glory to God. It therefore meant that the, that that being, being anointed doesn't mean that you're sanctified. 
as you said earlier, the gifts and the calling of God. They are without repentance. And that is why you see so many persons that you believe are under the anointing. They are shaking, Bishop. They are shaking like the man with the long hair did, the man with the dreadlock did, the strong man, Samson. Yes, yeah, Samson, yes. If I could just shake. So when but they no come power. up, they shake. And they they, they <laughs> no put power. on everything, but there is no power. My oh, God. glory to God. Mm. We need the spirit of God. When a, when a person is truly sanctified, it is the spirit of God that comes in. Can I, can I qualify my statement? Let me go back to the Old Testament. When God wanted to come down on Mount Sinai, he said to Moses, sanctify the people. Yes. Oh, glory be to God. Yes. And they were sanctified and, and God appearance came in. So it is when a person is truly is truly living the life of Christ. Uh, oh, God Almighty. Uh, the, the, the appearance of God will, will come in. The Spirit of God will come in on the inside. Hallelujah. And bring it forth the word. Therefore, then, the Bible said that we are not made with a spirit of fear. Therefore, love will come out. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Power will come out of that individual because the spirit of God now abides. It is the spirit of God that initiates and invokes the power, the authority that thus saith the Lord. And that is why, as we said earlier, the devil will run. Oh, hallelujah. I must yes. say this before I, I give, give someone else a chance. Because I was at my work and I came in. I remember I honked my horn at someone in a, in a, in a friendly gesture and they raised their middle fingers at me. And... Uh, they went, they clocked out. When I was there to clock out now, that man was there waiting on me, waiting, waiting. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm waiting on you because I did something. I didn't, you know, because I normally do it. It just happened. So I'm apologizing. I did not mean to do it. It means, therefore, that 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 when when, when we go into our workplace, into our environment, we, we have to present than God to them. So even when they slip up, they know that, hey, mm, this is not right. It eats out at them. Praise the name of Jesus. So then, let us say this. We have to be confident in the God that we serve, whether we are in the workplace, whether we are at home, whether we are in that business meeting, that interview, wherever we are, we have to allow Jesus to get the glory from our life. Because believe it or not, people are seen and they are watching. We're to God. Sometimes they even cuss you out, but they know you're anointed. They're afraid of some things. Mm -hmm. I've seen persons run. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Run, hiding. Hallelujah. Because they were possessed with devils. And so I'm saying to us tonight, glory to God. For us to truly have faith in the action of God, we have to be sanctified by God. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, one of our, um, wow, wow. our listeners. Say, careful what you practice because you become it. And that's a perfect example as to what yeah. Elder just shows with a man and what he did because that's a practice of him. And so that is rightfully to say, if you practice and consecration, if you stay consecrated, if you do the things that you are supposed to do to be in alignment with God, that's what you do. If you get in trouble, the first thing you do is to call on God. Why? Because God. that's the way I know. The difference, Bishop, I find with our generation and why we're saying that we're not experiencing a move of God like we used to do back then is that the mothers of Zion were consecrated. The mothers of Zion talk consecrated, consecration. They live consecration. Even if you greet them, they greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if you're saying, and anywhere they see you, praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. And so they trust God beyond trusting. And sometimes I believe that because we have too much now and become so easy, we don't trust God the way they used to trust. But these mothers of Zion will trust God for everything. My they God. believe God for it. They live a life of consecration. When they pray and when they anoint you with oil. I remember I was going through and the Lord, just a rough time. And the Lord would direct me to a mother. And said, go to this mother's house and let her pray for you. And you mean you, the preacher, who travel and preach every day? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you have low moments? Oh, absolutely. And Bishop, while I'm at work here, the Lord said, go to this mother's house. I never, I didn't even have her number. She don't come to my church. She go to another church. But the Lord would direct me and said, call her. I called the secretary of the church that she go to. And I said, I, I urgently need to get this mother's number. And when I called mother, mother said, you know, I'm actually driving on my way home. 
home. I said, Mother, the Lord direct me to come and see about you and to come and see you and just lay at your feet. And Mother said, I'm on my way. Here is my address. Find me. And I'm telling you, brethren, when I went and I hugged her and Mother said, come with me in my prior room. And I sat in that room and I just cry and weep and let it out. And when Mother finished, anoint me with oil. And pray the minute you enter into her prayer closet, you feel the unction of God. And when she's through praying, Bishop, I didn't even remember what was bothering me, what was going on. But when mother was through, the power and the presence of God, God said, go and sit at her feet, lay at her feet and let you pray for you. And when she threw anointing me with oil, I am telling you, it was an encounter like never before. Why? Because God knows those who have a divine relationship with him. He knows those who he's connected to and he said go there go and sometimes we can become so high and deep oh i'm so high and mighty oh no what you're gonna think of the preacher no god say go there what i'm saying there's something about a consecrated life that you hear god and when he speaks it release your troubles troubled mind it's the only voice that makes the difference we cannot be consecrated and be puffed up we can't be consecrated and pride fill our heart no, a consecrated man walk in the precepts and the ordinance of God, understanding that you are sold out for Jesus Christ. And that is why when you're consecrated, there are some things you'll not tolerate. There are some words you'll not tolerate around you. There are some things that are uttered in your atmosphere that you won't tolerate because mm -hmm. I am consecrated. I live differently. I walk differently. I operate differently. I'll not allow you to talk about some things around me. No, no, no. Because it will mess with my atmosphere. Understand this. When you're consecrated, your entire house will shift. Your entire house will change Hallelujah. when you live a life that is consecrated. Yeah. Remember, you know, that Amen. just as same way as curse can travel in your bloodline, blessing can run in your bloodline too. That's and when right. you're consecrated from the top, it come all the way down. Some of us are walking in our grandmother's prayer. Some of us are walking in our mother's prayer and the consecrated life that she lives, our father's prayer. Can we talk the truth here of what consecration uh, is? Uh, so Children of God, the difference friends with the mothers of zion and now they live by faith they live consecrate sean they live in consecration they live they walk holy what's the difference it's the same god we have got to clean ourselves bishop remember what happened to achan after he disobeyed the rule and the command do not take anything with you that you find over there oh, don't bring oh. the babylonian garment inside some of us are trying to look like the world some of us are trying to do the things of the world the world is running to the church and the church is trying to look like the world we are the called out ones we are the separated ones they were losing battles and they said why are we losing they say sin is in the camp because there are some things inside there that don't belong there and joshua had to go and find it my god from zion and everybody die why joshua said this can be a curse that will run in the bloodline bishop so before this thing continue your children saw what you did so before they can do the same thing i'm gonna wipe everybody out mm. everybody dead he mm -hmm. killed everything because he said, I'm killing this lineage. Everything going to die just the same as that happened. The blessing can run in our bloodline, brethren. So when we live consecrated before our children, let me tell you, your children aren't hypocrites. When you your children are not hypocrites. Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. You watch what you do. When you live consecrated, your children will do it. When you pray, they will pray. When they see you fast, they will fast. When they know certain words we don't say at home. So when your children start to sing Beyonce and Jay-Z and rock to it, and you're acting like, where do you get that from? Oh, they hear you play. They're not hypocrites. They're not hypocrites. We got to live our life. Let your light so shine before men that they will see your good works and they will glorify your father which is in heaven when a light cannot be hid under a bushel bishop if you have a light your light can't be hid light shining darkness and darkness can't understand light defy darkness and when you have that light in you that light shine when you live a consecrated life that's why the mothers would say something your fragrance change can i tell you when sin enter the camp your fragrance change your body direct your body language change your direction change. That's why the mothers will say, mm -mm, something funky, something funky. <laughs> I'm 
mercy. <laughs> I don't want to. I, I don't want to preach. But the mothers will tell you something funky. It's different. They said you lose the sheen. You lose the sheen. You lose the sheen because there's a light, and that there's is why we need the glory. Live consecrated life again. That's why we need the discerners again. We need them back in the house, children of God, so that we they can help us and steer us when we're out of line to say, "Come, daughter. Come, son." This is the way of the Lord. Walk therein. The Bible says, search for the old path. And when you find it, walk therein. Wow. 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 <laughs> you're on steam this morning. Your bishop was on steam. I'm telling you, this is good. This is good. It, it is, it is uh, actually, you know, helping somebody. And I hope somebody out there, um, you know, is, is saying to themselves, you know what? I need to find back my prior life. I need to find back my fasting life. I need to find, because it doesn't matter what you do, you cannot, you cannot get rid of some of the things that you're passing through without a sanctified life. Amen. You cannot overcome some things that you're going through without a sanctified life. And you have a legacy to leave behind because your children is depending on you. Your children is depending on your actions and your behaviors and things that you're doing. And 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 you don't want to be a first class hypocrite. Lord Jesus, you don't want to be a first class hypocrite. You want to make sure that your children see, and someone said in the chat, is that children um, practice what they see and hear. And mm -hmm. our children, you know, do things what they have seen. But let's get into the word again. The Bible says that um, abstain from all appearance of evil. When you are sanctified, you appear, the, the, the very appearance of evil. You know, as a young Christian, my goodness, you know, our, our, our former pastor, Bishop, used to tell us, if you're walking down the road and you see a young girl and you look and, and you see the girl in front of you, just look. He said, look to the left. If you look to the left and you see another one, look to the right. If you look to the right, look up. <laughs> but whatever you do, don't look again. He said, the first time, you couldn't avoid it. What, what he's trying to say. The second time, if you look, because sometimes you look at something because, you know, you see it because, you, you, you know, it's natural. It's just in front of you. But he says, nothing is wrong with the first time, but it's when you start to glaze and stare and, and and you start to you start to you start to know. He says, "Man, he says sin is is the devil just want to enter inside of you." So he said, "Look up." He said, "Look up." He said, "Look to Jesus," and that thing left something in me. What he's what they were trying to do is to help us to keep a sanctified life, to make sure that we are set apart. Bible says, "And the very God," he says, "Abstain from uh, the appearance of evil." Right. When you abstain from the very appearance of you see it, of evil, he says, and the very God. Not your uncle, not your auntie, not your brother, not your sister. No, the very God of peace sanctify you. Are you hearing me, somebody? The God of peace, not, not, not your pastor. God will look at how you are living your life I says, you are, you know, I don't think this is us, me. This is me. I believe that you give God your best and God will do the rest. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your, he know that you are human. He knows everything about you. But if you only can come to God at a certain interval in your life, do your best and watch God do the rest. Can we go for another break, um, Elder? My God Almighty. We are actually at the top of the hour where we're looking to take the wrap um, for the show. Uh, I, I know I know we are having a great time, but it's actually we we are actually right on time to wrap. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know we're having a good time, but we are just about uh, a minute over our time. But um, Rev, we want to just make two plugs before we go. We want to again thank everyone for joining us on the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast. But I also just want to uh, plug that Edmonton is coming live next week, a live next week Edmonton Bishop uh, Hopeton Morris will be in Edmonton next week preaching at Pastor Anderson's Mission Convention. Um, Reverend Clive, remind me the name again of Pastor Anderson's church um, or Bishop, uh, Pastor over, Anderson. Over, Overcomers Pentecostal. 
Overcomers Pentecostal Church. That's in Edmonton. So Overcomers Pentecostal Church, Bishop Hopeton Morris will be there on next weekend. So if you are in Edmonton, please go over and join and get a chance to meet Bishop. Just tell him, hi, Bishop. I'm a listener on the program. Get a chance to meet him. Go there, support and pray for him. And again, if you're in the Toronto area tonight, I'll be at Faith, uh, Faith Apostolic Church. That's a part of the Bethel United Church of Jesus Christ uh, on the Bishop D.W. Thompson. The pastor of that assembly is Pastor Taylor. So I'll be there tonight uh, in their youth convention. So if you are in Toronto area, join me tonight. Come on over and worship the Lord with me. Good to have you on Bishop uh, pa, uh, Devon Donovan Brown, Elder Donovan Brown. God bless you, sir. Preached down the place last night in Brampton. Good to have you on. God bless you. Again, we are at the top of the hour. We want to thank everyone for joining us here on the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast. Thank you so much to all our friends near and far for joining us from New Jersey to New York to Atlanta, back to Jamaica, to Antigua, to the United Kingdom. I see someone on from Wolverhampton in UK. Thank you so much for joining us. To our listeners in Europe, to all our listeners and from 136 countries that are joining us on the HGG radio. Number one for gospel in Edmonton. We want to thank you for tuning in. Thank you for making the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast your Saturday morning routine and the show that you wake up to. Thank you for waking up, waking up with us this morning. Again, Thank you for your yet another thought-provoking episode on the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast. On behalf of the entire production crew, we invite you to join us next week for another thought-provoking discussion. You can't afford to miss this one. So until next time, we love you for listening. It's the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast, where we not just talk, but we are informative. Until then, God bless. Join us for the Iron Man Empowerment Podcast, where we discuss matters close to the heart. This and every Saturday at 8 a.m. until 9.30 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on HGG Radio. I am your host, Dr. Lincoln Bryan, alongside your co-host, Pastor Clive Atkinson, Bishop Hopeton Morris, and Elder Edmund Muir. The Iron Man Empowerment Podcast. We're not just talk, we're informative. HGG Radio. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 a revolution is coming to the Hope of Glory Morning Show. Get ready for the pulsating, electrifying, inspiring, and motivating two hours of music, word, health, and wealth. Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Right here on HGG Radio, join me, your host, Roshane Douglas, the Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the new time for the Hope of Glory Morning Show, Mondays to Fridays from 6 to 8 a.m. Right here on HGG Radio. Visit our website, hggradio.ca, or download the HGG Radio mobile app. See you soon. Do you want a revolution? I say, do you want a revolution?
reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. Higher ground radio. radio. Just want to thank you this morning for joining us right here on AGG Radio, where we reach you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley. I want to thank God for Dr. Lincoln Bryan, and of course, with our co hosts my God, Suffolk Bishop, Opton Morris, over there in Montreal, Elder Edmund Muir, right here in Edmonton. Alberta and of course myself, Pastor Clive Atkinson. We want to thank you for joining us this morning right here on AGG Radio. And I know you're there praying for me as I'm still in recovery. So hopefully I'll be coming back strong in a few weeks. I still have three more weeks to go, eh? I, I think I'm doing really good. Last night I pushed myself. I went out to service. I shouldn't have done it, but <laughs> my God. You know when you just love God, you want to be there. But I came home, I was really tired. But after coming home, you know, to, to, to just to coming home, I just went straight to bed. I went to sleep. My God, I slept like a baby. Thank God for my beautiful wife, Sister Melody. What a mighty God this morning. I want to thank you again so far for staying with us. We'll, we'll be here, right here on this, this morning until 10 o'clock this morning. 11 o'clock in Jamaica and of course 12 o'clock in Ontario and if you're in British Columbia it will be 9 o'clock mm -hmm. This is where I pull things down on YouTube and on Facebook. What am I hey. But if you want to keep on listening, listen. you got to run over to the app. Eh? Download the mobile app this afternoon, this morning. It is HGG Radio. Go to the Google Play Store, the Apple Play Store. You can go to our website. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Join us on April 5, 2024 for an evening of praise and worship presented by MR Productions featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross Michael Reed from Edmonton. I know I'm blessed. Rex Uche in Narragans Group and Showers of Blessings Praise Team live in concert. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Showtime 7 p.m. at the Southeast Hope Assembly, 520 60th Avenue, Southeast Calgary. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284. 3450. That's come worship the king. Calgary. See you there. My soul. HGG Radio. Edmonton, get ready for Come Worship the King on April 6, 2024. Hosted by MR Productions. Come and experience the ultimate night of praise and worship featuring Petra K from Jamaica. Oh, I cross 
Michael Reed, Chanel Edwards, Glenn Barnes, and Pastor Alric O'Connor. Special appearances from The Generation. And we are his MC Crystal Reed at the Citadel International Church, 9253 48th Street, Edmonton. Gates open at 5.30 p.m. Showtime, 6 p.m. Adults pre-sold $35, $40 at the door. Kids, $15 at the door. Get your tickets at eventbrite.ca or call 780-284-3450. That's Cold Worship King, King Edmonton. Edmonton. See you there. there. My soul! Disability Empowerment Foundation, in partnership with Great Commission Foundation, presents Disability Awareness Musical Concert under the theme The Gifted and the Lifted at the Redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG Champions Parish, 18811 111 Avenue, Edmonton, on Saturday, April 6, 2024, from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Admission free! That's the Disability Awareness Musical Concert, April 6, 2024. See you there. Are you ready to amplify your message and reach hearts with purpose? Introducing HGG Advertising, your partner in spreading the gospel and connecting with the Christian community. Churches, Christian-based businesses, listen up. With HGG Advertising, you can reach your audience through powerful radio campaigns. Engage hearts, inspire minds, and grow your community with HGG Radio, which is already reaching 136 countries worldwide. We specialize in promoting Christian values and helping businesses aligned with faith-based principles. Whether it's a church event or your business rooted in Christian values, HGG Advertising is here for you. Connect with us and let's share your message with purpose. HGG Advertising, spreading the gospel, connecting communities. Email us today at ads at hggradio.ca that's ads at hggradio.ca or call us today at 825-343-4486 HGG Radio reaching you at the highest mountain and the lowest valley higher ground gospel radio <laughs> 